we're going to do tonight is challenge the, no the, the notion of the sacred um, by tackling the taboo, uh, dealing in dangerous ideas and shining a light on some of the issues that perhaps we'd rather not, uh, we'd rather ignore. This week is about celebrating uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture, celebrating the dynamism, vibrancy, strength, uh, and, and our cultures, which are the oldest uh, in the land. So may the good spirit be with us and watch over us. This is the Wajak section of the Yunnar language group. I ask the good spirit to guide us through this presentation when we're exchanging conversation. And Murtang Wangi means if we stretch it a little bit every now and then, may the good spirit be with us as well and guide us through that. Uh, and when this is all over, may the good spirit take us safely back home to our families and to our countries. So I'll do a song for you, which is a serious part of things, and ask the good spirit to be with us. But, and I'll finish up by just playing a, a tune without the didgeridoo. Uh, I left it at home, so. <laughs> On the side, so. But, but I will play, no problems. And, and unfortunately, I have to go straight away because I've got another commitment uh, after this. I can't stay and wish you all well here uh, and leave you with a, a wise proverb we have here in our, our culture. And you can take this around the world with you that everyone's important and everyone brings pleasure. You have to remember that. Some when they arrive and others when they leave. <laughs> <laughs> as Indigenous, and in saying that, I do still acknowledge my white heritage and am just as proud. However, for me, I am Aboriginal first and foremost because it is a culture I've been brought up in. This culture reflects who I am. It is that that I'm very proud of. The government has, been, has recently, I think the West Australian government, has recently deregistered 30 sacred sites in WA. Thankfully, the Supreme Court has... Um, has ruled that this deregistration was invalid, but it is clear that the government has no interest in protecting our sacred sites. Instead, they are looking for ways to deregister them as sacred. This illustrates that the Aboriginal Heritage Act and Native Title are no longer performing the tasks that they were originally intended for. These pieces of legislation are tools for the government's use and abuse. Do we want our land disturbed? Is it... It is no longer sacred land after it has been mined. We need to, as people, think more commercially and to think about the sustainability of our land. I know that many Aboriginal people would, refer to, um, would prefer to do things on our own, but the reality is the world functions on money. And we need to work out the best way to use the resources and systems that are in place to protect our future and our culture and keep our land and people sacred. Thank you. They want this how-to guide of how to deal with Aboriginal people. And always the advice I give people is get to know the person. Do the thing that they didn't do very well in first contacts, which was actually spend time with people, get to know people, connect with people, understand people, and the many different ranges and forms they come. So the problem is, is that having to define our Aboriginality in 2015 is really hard because the word Aboriginal isn't even a word we use. Yeah? And this is why I always talk about the most important thing about my identity. I get to define it because I'm a Noongar woman and I break all the taboos. I'm 31, I'm an entrepreneur, I work in Indigenous consultancy and I'm a woman, right? So there's a couple of barriers there for me, right? And, and, and you know, I'm, class, I'm that classic example. I'm that young kid who had that traumatic 
you know, life experience when I was young and it set me off the rails and, you know, that, that, that cliche story that you hear. Um, and the place that I found myself was here, at Kulbadi. If it wasn't for Kulbadi coming to my life, I don't know where I would be because at Kulbadi I got to meet amazing people like Aunty Brenda Hill up in the audience there, um, like Erin, a fellow student. You know, they're, they're the amazing people that I got to meet who are Indigenous and non-Indigenous, yeah, that helped me get through my trauma, get through my hard time, but helped me get that piece of paper, yeah. But I also got to learn about my Nyungar culture, my Nyungar heritage. So I didn't have to choose black or white. And my whole life living in this country, it felt like I always had to. Are you Aboriginal or are you white? And what I realised, it was actually both of those things that made me the strong, very successful and damn hot woman that you see standing before you. <laughs> the stereotypes don't define us, we get to define us. And as the next generation of the young Aboriginal people out there, um, we too have adapted and evolved and changed. Um, and we have very strong roots to our culture and our history. Of course we do, but how we express them and how we promote them, I guess, in this time, in this day and age, um, will be different to how our ancestors did before us. And I always think that it's very important, as long as we pay respects to that knowledge and that connection uh, that we have and where we've come from, uh, but also innovate as Aboriginal people of how we express that message and how we invite and inspire our non-Indigenous brothers and sisters to come along that journey with us. Uh, I think that's the, the best way um, to, to connect with culture and to promote culture. So I'll leave you with this. Uh, mum and Dad, uh, like I said, Mum's a white Russian. <laughs> um, and Dad's a Nyungar man. And back in the day, you know, non-Indigenous and Indigenous people weren't really allowed to cohabitate. Um, however, uh, their love for each other, their connection for each other, uh, they defied all the odds. Um, and it's clear proof when Indigenous and non-Indigenous people come together, they create beautiful things. So <laughs> whenever I'm asked if I'm gay though, or if it comes up in conversation, it's usually met with, that's cool. Occasionally I might get the, I've got this gay family member slash friend thing or, you know, or someone's disgust, but generally it's met with someone's approval of my sexuality. And while people bestowing their approval on me can be frustrating, at least I don't have to justify my existence as a gay man as much as I have to justify it as an Aboriginal one. In regards to that poem, there's something I would like to point out, and that's why I call myself an Australian Aboriginal man. Australian and Aboriginal. It's almost like a paradox, two opposites. I guess that's why that these are two words that I had to make peace with. To say Australian, it felt to have betrayed my ancestors and that I had sided with the suppression of my people. To say Aboriginal, felt to generalize us and neglect the diversity of culture and nations within us. Inevitably though, I decided that introducing myself as a Kukuyanji, Wanyi, Gungali, the Wapapa, Bunjalang, Birupai man whose connection to country was that of the Mitakuti, Bindala, Wakarukaba peoples was too long an introduction. <laughs> Therefore, I am an Australian Aboriginal, which I would like to point out is not to be confused with an Aboriginal Australian. What's the difference, you may ask? For me, it shows what I am influenced more by, the stronger side of my identity. Just as I am a gay Aboriginal man, not an Aboriginal gay man. A uh, diversified identity. Some successful, some dependent. Some are warriors, some dependents. Some are leaders, some are lost. Some are workers, and some are boss. Separate, yet one are we, diversified identity. Cultural, traditional, First Nation, Aboriginal, mission breed, advocate, Jackie Jackie, coconut, conservative, assimilated, blackfella, urban native, activist, he got fair skin, mild black sheep, proper gin, illiterate, educated, city dweller, Isolated, fighting hard, running scared, someone spoke, no. Someone dared, commonwealth, sovereignty. What do we want, what do we need? Burn the flag, save the queen, on the fence and in between. Speak the truth or sit in silence. Brotherhood or lateral violence, self gain, common cause, locked cells, open doors. Close the gap and reconcile, yet intervention, screams denial, stronger futures, stronger past. We've survived, but will we last? People talk assimilation, silent self-determination, separate, yet one are we, diversified identity.